morning and welcome to Utopia Farms. It seems hard to believe that a year's gone by and we're back into winter again. Oh yeah, wait a minute. That was just yesterday we were in spring. Well, this is Canada for you. It's snowing, it's accumulating. Tomorrow on shearing day, it's supposed to be a high of minus five and go down to minus 10 at night, plus wind. Yeah, not the best time for a shearing day. Anyway, let's go in and see what's happening in here today. Arnie called this nah. guy a troublemaker. Nah. Hey, buddy. He's my pretty triplet. Nah. Can I have a milk machine for my birthday? Yeah, that's right. You can have a milk machine for your birthday to save you feeding bottles. Because Arnie feeds bottles on, on videos, but in real life he doesn't. <laughs> Why don't you take a picture of me doing the dishes when I never do them? Yeah, well, that would be impossible because even with the camera rolling, that doesn't happen. How about the laundry? Yeah. You know, he's such a pig, he can't finish the bottle. Oh, he can finish that whole thing for sure. You just have no patience. Boy, he's got good posture. Good well for him. He's such a pretty lamb. That's why we kept his mom, even though uh, we knew that she... Uh, her udder was destroyed due to constant triplets. Um, That's it. She always throws nice lambs. Always, always. Never had her throw bad ones and always triplets. Okay, buddy. Time to get to work now. So this is the little guy. He's taking a bottle now. See how little he is? I have really small hands and... Her head is that small. I'll get the other one up in a minute so you can see. But look, she's drinking a bottle. Hi. Hi, you're lovely. Yeah, you're doing a good job. You're doing a really, really good job. Just to show you the size difference. And these guys aren't big either. These are the, the twins that she's with. Oh, let me lift you up. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really show that she's that much smaller. But this guy weighs uh, uh, 12 pounds, maybe, and this one probably weighs a cup, maybe two. Maybe two? Because you're so little. You're so little. Yeah, but you're nice. Say hi. Yeah, you're nice. You're really, really nice. Have a little more? Come on. I have to hold her up when she gets a bottle so the others don't step on her. There you go. Good girl. That's better than tubing. Way better. She's the cutest little thing. Oh, there's my little triplet. He's decided to hop in here because he can never get enough food. Have you, are you done yet? Are you done? Are you feeling a little full? You're still working on it. Oh, you're working on it really well. Yeah, you are. You're working really well. Would you like some? Here. Yeah. And you don't really need any. You had a whole bottle all to yourself. See that? I've got the uh, I've got the camera in the feed trough, so that because I have nowhere to put it. Um, and this uh, triplet, I I swear he can see the picture there, and that's why he keeps going up to see what that is in the feed trough. <laughs> Buddy, you had more than your fair share. More than your fair share. Baby, let's share with the bit, the younger one, shall there we? There they all are. And this white one doesn't belong in here, but he's figured out to hop across from the group pen into the jug here. There you see the size and how much the triplet's grown too. You 
You guys are so nice. You're all doing really well. So these guys are doing good, as you saw. Just like a, just like a magnet, eh? They, they, they just can't stand there, so you can take a picture of them. They have to follow you. Isn't that something? But they all get along really nicely together. He's got to straighten his little legs up. <laughs> so we're in the coverall, feeding the lambs, getting things uh, all topped up so we don't have to do it tomorrow because it's shearing day. And then we found that someone in here is just definitely lying down on the job. Buddy likes this barn now because there's rat holes here. Because we're feeding so much creep and the creep is open in the troughs, he likes to spend all his time here watching for them. So he's actually protecting us from getting the rats in the feed and eating the feed. But obviously he's had a very, very long night because he's fast asleep. It's funny how the cats in the barns get along so well with the sheep. The sheep seem to really like the cats, and the cats really like the sheep. mentioned it's a busy day for us tomorrow with shearing uh, we have to do it 24 7 with the guy so we can't be running around doing chores so we're getting uh, the bulk of the them done right now we're topping up the creep feeder so and I'm gonna fill up all the salt and mineral holders and give the drinkers a good scrub down so that tomorrow it's just uh, uh, cursory chores as fast as we can, get them done, and we'll be heading out to help with the shearing. It would have been nice if there was a bunch of people in our area who could come out and have a look and come help with the shearing, but we're uh, in a pretty dead area for... Uh, people into farming and stuff. Uh, it's a dying industry here, so uh, help is extremely hard to come by. We're unloading Big Peanut from the barn because we figured since she's not looking after Little Peanut, and never did, and she's basically dried up, we've brought her over in the trailer. And she's going to join this breeding group. If Arnie can move up here and get her. There she goes. We'll try again. See if she does better this time. One of the things you need for shearing is to have a plywood base or a chipboard base down for the shearer to do his work on. So um, we'd been using our chipboard to block off the ends of the barns in the winter and we need about four pieces so he took a couple off of uh, the coverall with the lambs in 
and he's uh, taking a couple more down from this barn which normally would be great at this time of year but uh, right now as you could see the weather out here it's uh, nasty cold snowing and it's only gonna get worse and colder so these guys in this barn are old enough that it won't make any difference but I, I do worry a little bit about the younger lambs although they should be fine too I mean some people have them outdoors so um, ours are in better shape than that but yeah ideally you uh, want to shear on uh, a good nice warm sunny day not a cold windy snowy day but it seems that inevitably that's what happens in Canada I'm just videotaping all the preparations that have to be made before shearing so um, this morning we uh, made sure that all the creep feed was in the bins ready for tomorrow's feeding and uh, we did a topped up all the salt and minerals and did thorough cleanings on everything made sure uh, everything was topped up basically so that tomorrow we won't need to do as much work and we can focus solely on shearing and this afternoon it's about setting up the shearing area which uh, has to be done in advance too so this is why when your shearer like happened last year just doesn't show up doesn't call you doesn't show um, he's put you out um, quite a bit because there is a lot of preparation involved it's not just someone coming and cutting the wool off your sheep there's all the pre-preparation and the after uh, afterwards cleanup and we just got back from groceries um, in Canada. I don't know about other countries, but we also uh, feed the shearers. They get snacks um, morning and afternoon, and they get all their meals prepared here. So um, it's making sure that we have enough food and stuff uh, to keep them going and keep them happy and make them want to come back. So it's all that. I'm looking at this uh, Suffolk group of lambs. I, I know there are sheep, and I, I probably shouldn't say it, but gosh, the, this group, they look extremely sharp right now. I find this is the age when they, they look their very best. And as they get a little older, they'll go into a more teenage stage where they'll get a little more stringier looking. They'll lose the baby fat, and it's that, that transition between baby and uh, adult. Uh, where, just like with people, they go through that angly, not so attractive stage. And then uh, by the time they're a year old, they, they, they look beautiful again. But uh, very, very pleased with the lambs this year. I think our customers will be pleased too. So another thing we had to do for them, because it's going to be such a cold day tomorrow, and they're going to have all this wool taken off, and you can see how thick it is on some of them. Giselle, show me your wool. You've got lots of it, don't you? You guys have lots of it. So we put a whole bunch of bedding on either side, so that uh, tomorrow, if it's really cold, we can they can snuggle down and help you stay warm. Okay, so these are, this is where the shearing's all gonna be done tomorrow. So the sheep will come around and they're gonna go past this gate and they're gonna go in this holding spot. By around he means from the other side, it, it loops all the right way around the back and comes up to the front here. And we're gonna end up in here. And from here, I'm going to load them up into this chute and then they're going to enter down this chute here and when this is full we're going to lock it. and uh, we have a different locking mechanism than some people have some people have like what do you call that a, a little bifold door and we don't like those because 
Well, actually, I, this, this is a slider, okay? They're a little more money. And I didn't like it either, but I actually welded these handles on here. So they move a lot easier. And it works, and they, these work really nice. I like these a lot. And they're a lot stronger because when uh, the sheep get in these chutes, sometimes they back up. And we have really, really heavy sheep. And when they were backing up, they were actually opening them, weren't they? Yeah. And And... And the straw and stuff would get in them, and you couldn't close them properly. They were just, uh, we figured they were poor design. Well, I find the sliding gate, which is up, or the folding gate, which is up there now, we don't use. Used to be here, but I didn't like the folding gate because it was too slow. By the time I got the door shut, some of the sheep were back in the yard already. Yeah, that, this is a lot that was the one we were talking about, and it's right up front here. I'll quickly show you. So we don't use it as a divider. We, it's up front. I don't know why. I was going to show you that in a few minutes. Okay, good. So as the sheep come in here, we're going to load them. And we used to have a folding door here too, but it was always in the way for the shearer. So I thought, why not put the guillotine there? So when two sheep, we can only get two sheep in here at a time. And I open this up. I load up a sheep. And the sheep goes into this pen here. Well, we are going to do it tomorrow, but this so, is the explanation the, today. So the first thing, just to start over again, the first thing we do is, is we put a sheep at the very front for bait, to bait them in. It's so a lure. We put a sheep down this, this here goes down, we drop this pin through here in the bottom, so the sheep stays here all day. And so the theory with that is that sheep are flock animals. They see one up there, and they think that they should be with that one. So that kind of makes them go forward. So that sheep stays there all day. As we're shearing, we just keep loading up a sheep every time in that box, ready for the shearer to pull out. Every time we load up a sheep. And I like this a lot because it's really fast and easy. Not much trouble. So when the sheep is in here, we got these little uh, bar doors from the black boat, little pub down the road. And the uh, sheep go out, opens them up, pulls the sheep out. And that little wall right there, right there, it's a trip. So when they pull the sheep out, that will pull the, knock his feet out, and the sheep will lay on the ground right there. You'll see it tomorrow. It works quite slick. And as he pulls the sheep out, it shuts. We don't have to use the safety thing, but some sheep are quite rowdy. They get out. But other words, the, the, the sheep will just stay right in there. But if, I'm, but if I'm not confident enough, I'll just lock it. And the sheep will unlock it, lock it. So the shearer will go like this. He'll open it up. He'll go like this. He'll grab you. He'll slip his bum down. He'll, he'll trip over that, that uh, little table. On her back leg, she'll, she'll kind of trip there. And he'll lay her right down, right here in your chair. And then that, the doors are spring loaded. They'll go shut. And then I'll reload, I'll reload the sheep. It works quite slick, you'll see it tomorrow. And what's the part, what's that front gate for? So the front, the front, the front gate is only a gate for the heat the front you in here. And how and does, the, and she these, can't push these, it open? And these are the folding ga gates that I hate because yeah. they're too slow. So we use it up here. And the reason why it's too slow, it's just too slow. So we, we use it there just to hold the sheep up here. And then at the end of the day, we'll open this up, pull the last sheep out and shear it, and it'll be done. So you can't buy this system. I made all this system up myself. So then we, ha then we, we, we purchased the bag holder. We use the square bags. Yeah, we use they the four, fit about, we, we what, the thir bags. 30 fleeces in here? Oh, no, you can get about 30 in here. That's, yeah, 35. that's what I said, 30. So I'm just going to go, I just go like this. So when I purchased this bag holder, see the holes there? They wanted me to put nails in there to hold the bag, which were terrible. The nails were terrible to hold the bags. So when I made my own design, so I went like this, and I fold it like that. I take this here. I put it on there and it holds it down. And it's just a, a folded piece of metal in a U kind of. It's basically. A U, yeah. What would you call that? A U bracket? It's basically like a giant fold thing. 
So I just like this. It goes real fast. Whoop. I just fold Whereas before you had to put a nail in every little hole, and so it was time-consuming, and so this is much quicker, and it actually holds it way more securely. And then I can I can put about well, well I can count tomorrow how many we put in there. I, I think, think about it's 30 about 30. 30, yeah. And then uh, and we have really big sheep, so they're big fleeces. And then they had this bar in the front to, to take the bag out, and this bar was always in with a bolt, which you had to unbolt. It was just time-consuming. So then I made this up. So that comes right off. Oh, that's the bag good. folds out. And I put it right back in again. And there's no bolt involved. Yeah. So it was real fast for me. Because you'll see tomorrow when it's, especially when it's just the shearer and us two, uh, when you're pushing sheep through chutes, um, folding fleeces, packing them in here, and then when it's loaded, sealing this bag up and putting in a new one. You have to have things moving fast because uh, these shears are fast and it's all we can do to keep up with them. So, yeah, when Arnie makes it like this, this makes the process go way easier. So we have two of these. We have one for wool and we have another one like this that's not set up yet. It'll be set up tomorrow. Yeah. That's for, uh, for scraps. Yeah, so scraps would be bellies the wool, the wool and bellies little and pieces and, and like yeah, colored pieces we want to keep uh, the nicest fleeces in the big bags here so basically we we bought we bought most of the material and actually we've 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 found that a lot of stuff didn't work right so we were we, we've been altering it and i love this because i can stand here when the shearer pulled his sheep out i can go like this the next sheep will go right up because she sees that sheep at the front and, it, and i can load it just like that yeah it's all about it being quick and efficient. So right so, here, Arnie's going to be putting down that chipboard. He's going to be filling this floor up. They don't like to work on concrete no. or straw or any kind of bedding pack because it just hinders them. And uh, so that this is what they like. So Arnie's going to make a wooden floor here for him. Four sheets of chipboard. Just overlap them and uh, screw it together and they're on a platform to work on. And I'll be sacking the wool over there. And then when we're done, um, that wool bag's not going to be there. Nope. Um, that wool bag is probably going to be uh, in this opening here, probably, eh? Is this where we're going to put it? Put I imagine the wool bags will be here in the doorway. Yeah, I think put them both gonna, there. Because the, the sheep will go right back. And uh, this, this, in this barn, it's a nice setup because there's the feeder. But on both ends, there's like an alleyway this one's just a small four foot alleyway but the sheep will come out here get shorn go in the alleyway and back into the pen and it's a circle and so it flows really really smoothly it's all about having uh, systems in place to make things work so, quickly so remember i told you these gates don't work very well yeah but the biggest fault with these gates are you see that little track at the bottom there yeah so that track fills up with a little bit of hay and, and shavings or debris and all of a sudden you can't move it anymore I just, I, and literally I, it takes minutes for them to bung I, up i totally would not recommend these i love that i love that slider and the reason why we the reason why we didn't have a slot we used to have a slider here to lock the sheep up but the slider the slider would stick out like this in the in the, in the shearer's way. Yeah, and he can bang into it. So I can't have that. So then I thought, why not just use the guillotine to bring the sheep in, which works real nice, real slick. And I can control it way back here as I'm holding. But we will show you with real sheep tomorrow. But this is all the preparation we have to do ahead of time, and we brought some. Uh, blinding lights uh, in here to help them see better because it's going to be a day like that tomorrow. Snowy, cold, windy, and we prob we may have to shut this door uh, depending on how cold it is feeling in here tomorrow. My so tube? we don't want it uh, to be too dark here for them because we don't want anyone getting cut. And if it's a nice day, we'll have the door open and the rams can watch. But, but we will be getting uh, four of these Dorset rams in tomorrow morning, and uh, they'll be getting... Well, actually, are you bringing them in in the morning? Yeah. 
Why would you, Rob? Look at that. Why would you live in Canada? Is that terrible? Is that is that a place to live, in Canada? <laughs> really? That's why we can't grow palm trees. I can't grow fruit. <laughs> I swear, the flakes are getting bigger as I stand here. So I think we've got everything organized for our shearing day tomorrow. That's all that's involved in preparing your day for sheep shearing. It is a lot of work you have to do ahead of time, but it's well worth it to make the shearing day go smoothly. So I hope you'll join us again next time for the next episode at Utopia Farms, which is gonna be sheep shearing. Bye for now.